Hello guys and welcome to today's SCPL. My name is Kix, if you've not seen me before, this is a team tournament. Here is the format. Uh, it's a best of five all the way up to the finals. Uh, the grand finals that is, uh, which is best of seven. Set one to four, all the lineups are selected in advance and all the games are played at the same time. So when they're playing, they do not know uh, about how their teammates are doing until obviously the games are over so every match is super super important uh, all four maps are always showing off as well and set five if we do make it to it is the ace match uh, the ace match basically means that anyone can play again uh, if they so choose to I do apologize I'm just quickly writing up the tweet I should have wrote up ages ago there we go just tweeting that out just so I can quickly retweet as well. Hopefully you all had a good Monday. Uh, my Monday was actually good for the first time in ages, so I'm quite happy with that. Had a nice, easy, well, I'm, I shouldn't really say that because if I say that, I'm gonna curse myself, but I had a nice, simple Monday. There wasn't any crazy problems or anything like that at work. It was just pretty nice. And then what we got to do was we got to stop play a little bit of VR check, I'm ready for the stream and here we are. So it's not been too bad. I have got my camera on today and if you notice my hair is basically gone. Uh, what I did was I ended up buying clippers and clipping my hair to 15 millimeters. It's not perfect. It still looks terrible probably but it, I think it looks a little bit neater than it did before so that's something. And the weather has been a little bit more tolerable. It's got really hot now uh, for some reason. I don't know how hot it is, but it's kind of annoying with how warm it is. I think I just get warm in the lead up to casting. I don't know why. I think I get nervous or something, even though I've been doing it for like three years. <laughs> I guess it's one of those things. Now let's have a quick look at the team rankings, just in case you didn't see my tweet from earlier. Uh, basically, team rankings as they are show Soul Gaming are qualified into the grand finals already. Nothing can happen to stop that or to make that change. Uh, even if IRK were to win two games or two matches in a row, they wouldn't be able to match the 9-0 or the nine wins, of course, of Soul Gaming. Things are interesting, though, in the middle of the table, though, because IRK, Net Wars, Valhalla Team, Clan Revolution, and Eternal Friends, as well as Red, are all in contention for that top six. Uh, Ash are quite close as well, but I don't think they can make it unless they can win one of their series. Uh, are they playing this week? Yeah, they are. So they are playing this week. They're playing Valhalla team. So if they can win their next two series, maybe there's a chance they can get through. But it's going to be rough because next week, Ash are going to have to face off against Sol. And it also depends on how it goes for the other teams as well. So... There is a lot of seeding going on. If you've not seen the playoff bracket for the STPL Season 3 just yet, it was in the announcement post, but I mean, that was a long, long time ago. Here is a link to it. I don't know if that's going to work for you, but if it doesn't, I'll rehost it somewhere. But essentially, first place in the group will go into the grand finals. Second place will go in to the semi-finals. 
and uh, then we'll have essentially the third and sixth place team play off against each other and the fourth and fifth as well so yeah the Premier League this year but I don't follow football but apparently it was very similar with Liverpool just like zooming ahead of everyone and no one else having a chance so I guess that's how it's gonna be but that's fine player rankings we've got a good number of players in the top 10 that many of you will know this hasn't changed too much over the last two weeks or so, I think uh, Newbury took his second place after Kogut lost twice in a row to Terra. I think that was what happened. Or was it Kogut beat Terra twice? I think Kogut beat Terra twice. My bad. Uh, but DeWalt moved up to fourth. He's doing an incredible job. And I mean, when you look at the amount of wins the players at the top have actually got, it just goes to show you how long some of these players have actually been playing in the SDPL. Like, DeWalt has played... 60 games that is 60 games worth or 60 weeks worth of scpl that's more than a year's worth of weeks consecutively uh if you were to count them in that way that uh Ter or the dewalt's played in the scpl and you've got koga on 50 as well it's really crazy ah uh, yeah so terra lost to koga twice then koga lost to bonnet which is when he ended up in third so that's pretty cool, because so we've actually got a TBT coming up for Koga this week, so his insane win ratio, or insane win record against Terran could be under threat here, but given the fact he's just beaten Terra twice, it's, uh, it's a little bit unlikely. But let's introduce both our teams for today. We've only got one series, so I'm taking things a little bit easier. There's no massive rush. Uh, we've got Eternal Friends coming up here. Now, Terra we're not going to see today. He has technically won his game already. Oh, Koga versus Sugo, is he? Let me double check. Ah, he is. It's week eleven. Uh, I've not in. I've not announced week eleven yet for anyone other than the team. So, spoilers. <laughs> I mean, that's not a major deal. Uh, but he's actually got a TBT against someone from DM in week eleven. But. Uh, everyone knows that who's actually playing, so it's not a major deal. Uh, Terra got a walk over this week over True Touch. Unfortunately, True Touch's internet died and didn't come back in time uh, before EF took a walk over. Uh, Chaelin, we're going to see as our first player, doing really well so far this season in the SUPL. King Toss making his debut in season three. Uh, he's not actually played in a very, very long time. And DN Max was added recently to their roster, uh, but will be looking to get a get revenge on his loss in his previous game now their opponents they have lost to them previously can they get revenge it's going to be irk arguably the strongest team outside of south korea i nearly said north korea but then you've got to take into account all the south korean teams but irk a very very good team they've got so many good players i mean all four of the players in this lineup are very very strong And, um, I mean, True Touch, he did lose to Terra in a walkover due to his internet uh, favorite. We're going to see him first up against Shaylin. We're going to see DeWalt, and we're going to see Vardy. Really looking forward to this series. IRK, the strongest non-South Korea, the, the strongest foreign team is the easiest way to say that in the STPL uh, in this season as well as the previous ones as well. So looking forward to seeing how this is going to go. Ryan Metal in chat saying Zero didn't show up either. I wonder if there was a huge storm in Poland that made them miss. It, it, it is possible. Uh, maybe like a storm took down the internet or something. Okay, so the lineups we're going to have. Ignore game number one. Game two, we're going to start with EF at a 1-0 lead. Chaelin is going to be up against Favourite on Monty Hall in a ZVP. We're going to have, of course, uh, X does mean walkover. Yeah, I probably should... Trouble is, I can't use W, so I should probably put like a note on the overlay somewhere that that's what that means. Uh, and it should be a different color if they won it uh, compared to if they lost it. But basically, then we're going to go into a PvP because it is SDPL. And in this season, we've got another one. Then we've got a PvT between DN Max and Tripod. Now, if you were to look at these, the way this is going, I would say we have a very high probability of getting to an ace match here. Because Vody is an incredibly good Terran. DeWalt is an incredibly good Protoss player, and as good as Favorite is as a Protoss, Chaelin is really, really good at ZVP. So if I was to take a prediction on this series, I would say Chaelin, 
Dewalt Vardy. That's not to say that's how it's going to go, but that's what I would predict. I don't know if I'm going to be right, but I guess we'll find out. So let's have a look at our first player here. It is going to be Chaelin, uh, one of the most popular female Twitch streamers from South Korea. Really, really good at the game as well. She's done really well in the SCPL. Seven out of her last 10 games have been wins, and she's got a 75% win rate over Protoss in, uh, in 12... In the, yeah, in 12 games. That is crazy good. So, there we go. Uh, let's have a look at her opponent. It's going to be the one, the only IRK's favorite. Favorite has done pretty well. I mean, he's got a 100% win rate against Zerg, technically, which is pretty good. Uh, Terror and True Touch was unfortunately a walkover uh, because True Touch's internet died and he didn't make it back in time. Uh, but favorite, really, really a Protoss player for IRK. One of the heavy hitters they've had in their roster all the way since back in Season 1. And I'm looking forward to seeing how he's going to do as we go into our first map. It's going to be Monty Hall SE. This is definitely a bit of a weirder map. But most of the games here either go really fast or they go quite long. I'm hoping we'll get a quite long game here to uh, start us off with. But let's find out as we get into game number one. Okay, starting us off here in the top left hand position, we do have the one, the only, fighting for EF, it's Chalen. We do have a cheerful for Chalen as well. Really nicely done. I like the little plushy zergling. And her opponent spawning down here in the bottom right hand corner is in the blue, fighting for RK, its favorite. Now I do wonder how we're going to have both of these players playing this map. It's been a little bit strange. Also, if my volume is a little bit high compared to the game audio, or if the game audio is really high, please let me know. Uh, because I messed with my sound settings over the weekend, because Discord was just not playing ball. Uh, so I don't really know how everything sounds at the moment. It's kind of tough to tell your own audio, because it always sounds different on stream. Like, it doesn't seem to be no matter... No matter what I do, it always sounds odd, so... Okay, so it looks like Favorite's not going to do anything too crazy. Actually going to skip through the minerals to go for a 12 next, which is quite risky on this map, but Chaelin going to do exactly the same thing and go for a 12 hatch. But Chaelin's hatchery is actually a little bit later than you would want, so not the best timing here from Chaelin. Favorite getting his nexus a little bit faster as well, which is always a good thing. Uh, we do have the spawning pool coming up pretty straight for uh, pretty, pretty much immediately afterwards, so nothing... Too bad to be said there. Now, if you guys saw that cheerful before and you're like, I want to make a cheerful or I want to see what other cheerfuls there are, check out this link. It is a cheerful submission thread. They're on page one, there is a template. You can put anything there as long as it's not hateful or ridiculously horrible in any way towards any group or people. Uh, if you want to make something that supports one of the players, one of the teams, even one of the maps, then you can go submit one. You literally do not need any artistic merit whatsoever. I have considered making some cheerfuls myself when my artistic talent is almost zero. The best I can do is make some boxes that appear as an overlay. That's basically as far as I can go, but I can make some funny paint ones. But I think it, it goes against the spirit of things if I'm the one making the cheerfuls, so... And yeah, Packrat, you made a really good one. I'm looking forward to using that one. Now we got three hatch coming in from Chaelin. Uh, this third hatch serves two purposes. One, it obviously allows you to build a lot more units a little bit quicker. And it also allows you to uh, build a wall here. Allows you to mine out the wall a little bit more sensibly. You don't have to long distance mine like you've got Favorite doing. But Favorite's not going to open the whole wall, just going to go in and go for an expansion. 
Now are we gonna sit uh, we're gonna see a quick plus one here. We're gonna see a Stargate. Stargate is coming in. Pretty good. And yeah, you can see this is the benefit of doing this. Shailen's gonna be able to uh, mine this. Looks like she sent her drones a little bit early. Although maybe she just wants to get like through as quickly as possible. It is important to open that as quickly as you can against Protoss because if they've for some reason decided to proxy two gateways on your side of the map, you can pretty much just die. You'll at least lose your hatchery. But it's, it's not good for our poor Zerg players. Now we do have Hydra Speed coming in. No lair just yet. So Chaelin could be going for an all-in here. Now this would be a very risky play. Just because it is so hard to find out where your opponent is. Now, it's not going to be an all-in. There are a lot of drones coming in here. Chaelin definitely very good at making sure she builds up her economy very, very quickly. And in PvZ, or in ZVP especially from her, you notice a lot of the time she'll be even on workers in ZVP, which is not normal. It's so hard to make that work. And I mean, on this map especially, it is definitely a little bit easier to do that. And uh, Medinho saying, hard to find out where your opponent is in a two-player map, 2020 kicks. Yeah, but what you've got to remember is where your opponent's expanded, is what I meant to say. It's nice to know you're focusing, though. Are, are you not drunk today, Medinho? <laughs> Ooh, this is pretty good. Managing to glitch the Zealot over the minerals. Really nicely done there. Going to allow the Zealot to do at least a little bit of damage here. The Hydra pulling away at the last second. Super important not to lose that. The Zealot isn't going to do too much now. Uh, but we'll have to see how that's going to go now. We've got the Zealot in the mineral line now. Looks like Chaelin didn't choose to kill it, interestingly enough. But it will go down now without doing really any damage whatsoever. The Corsair killing nothing but taking a little bit more. And to answer your question, Marine Medic, if you watch the VOD from the previous cast on Friday, which is up on YouTube, you'll find out my position on it. I ranted for about 10 minutes, I think, on Friday about the whole situation, so I've said what I needed to say. I also did the, like, official statement thing. But yeah, that situation sucks. Well, we've got Chilin pushing forward. Now, the trouble is, as I mentioned before, because you don't know where your opponent's expanded to, if you push the wrong way, your Hydras are going to do absolutely nothing. Like, the Hydras are going to come out here, they're not going to be able to get through the minerals. You cannot send, well, you can send drones over, but it's very, very unlikely that that's ever going to work. We've got Favorite with Vision over the fact that Chaelin is going to try and come around the other way. And Chaelin may still choose to go through the middle. Like, expanding in the middle is not necessarily a bad thing. Now, Favorite is doing a really good job. Going up to Reavers, there's going to be Corsair Reaver here. Well, I say Corsair Reaver, but he's not building more than two, two or three Corsairs, I think it is at this point. And that's actually a really surprising decision. Like, Corsair Reaver on this map is very, very good, so... Uh, Zero did react to it. He actually reacted to it before I did on the BSL Twitter. Now, okay, there's a lot of cannons coming up here. There is the Reaver, of course. Reaver going to be a massive important thing in this defense. And this isn't that many Hydras. I mean, Chaelin is trying to force out a lot more cannons than there needs to be. But there we go. Also, Rhine Metal seeing new BSL cast for us. I mean, Zero hasn't said anything, but I imagine he'll just cast with Naoken again. And uh, also, like, the, the problem I would have is Zero could ask me to cast the BSL, and while I would love to, I just do not have the time. Like, STPL is on... Oh, that's a nice Scarab. That was very, very nice. Now, he, this is going to be a big problem if we do have drops coming in from Chaelin, which we do. If you don't have a lot of Corsairs, it can be very problematic to be able to defend against this. Now, we do have the shuttle out. This is going to allow Favorite to go for a little bit of aggression himself. 
Kaylin, obviously getting ready for some aggression of herself as she moves her Hydralis down to the bottom left. Now, is the... Oh, is the Shell going to scout the Overlords? He just sees it, but does he notice it on the minimap? This is going to be a big, big problem, but all oh, favorite, he's going to see the other Overlords. He should know that something is up here. The Corsairs should be coming back immediately. We need some units back in the main. Chalin is going to be hitting an incredible, incredible timing here with this drop. Drop play is about to come in. The shuttle is stuck in the middle. You can see that uh, Favorite's already bringing back his Reaver because he knows how important it is to go back and defend this. But the trouble is, yes, you can build cannons. That isn't going to help. Also, I see we have some uh, chat about alcoholic drinks going on in the uh, chat here, which is always good. Rum is definitely, rum and cider are definitely the best too. Just saying. Can't be a good bit of rum. Now, uh, Favorite going for an expansion down here in the bottom left, but can Favorite actually hold on against this massive drop? There's still a Reaver at the Natural. Why is this even here? Favorite knows that there's a big drop coming towards him. Looks like the shuttle tried to go up to the top but look at this look how far it's got to go to get back here and because we didn't have a lot of corsairs there's no way of clearing up these units there's no observer and there's no storm either storm is not yet done there's no way of killing these lurkers another high templar getting sniped this is surely gonna start to go out of control here one of the reavers still in the natural And this is rough for poor Favorite. Favorite gonna lose his main Nexus. Now there is two more Nexuses, but the Reaver going down. Imagine if there was two Reavers here. This would be an entirely different situation. Now luckily enough, both of the Lurkers did die to the Reaver Scarabs. And we do still have Storm. No, the Templar Archives went down. Did Storm finish first? Oh my goodness, that was an incredible timing to go in. Now we finally have these overlords going down in the bottom left. There's absolutely no way to defend against them. But look at this. Oh my goodness. I'm so sorry for missing this. Wow. I thought that was just an overlord. But 23 kills and 13. Favorite is on no workers pretty much. He's on 11. And at this point it's going to be almost impossible to come back. This is such a tough situation for Favorite to be in. Yes he's got three nexuses. Yes he can build three. No. He's got two nexuses. And I will go back and watch that, don't worry. Uh, let's just... I want to check what... The, that was around 11 minutes that that happened. But that was a lot of probes that went down. And look at this. He's coming back in again with more lurkers. This is going to be the nail in the coffin. I think we're just going to see favorite leave. Eight workers, seven workers. This is just too much damage. Now it looks like favorite wants to go for a big push to try and end the game. But unfortunately, these mineral... Oh, they are actually mined out. So he could technically go through here. But chalin has got one, two, three, four hatcheries worth of production. Double upgrades coming in. Already. Oh, okay, not already at 1-1. One, one. There, is, there is plus one here at least. So maybe with a Miracle Reaver Scarab, or at least a few of them, we could see something happen here. But it's going to be so rough to try and push through this position. And every Reaver Scarab is so hard to replace. The Lurkers are still in the natural. The Nexus is being killed and there's no way to kill them. Now this Reaver needs to be worth its weight in absolute gold here because that is the only way Favorite can win this game. This push has to work. It has to work. The Reaver is getting low. The Shuttle is getting low as well. And th there's no Observer. How do you, how do you break through, oh there is, sorry, how do you break through this? There we go, GG. That's game. Favor was actually starting to break through, but there just wasn't enough units. Looks like Chalin stayed in a little bit longer, just to make sure all the army died. But that means the series is 2-0 in favor of EF, which is a very interesting situation to be in for IRK. Now can, can DeWalt bring it back? I mean, he's going to be up against King Toss. You would say that he's favored in that matchup, but it is PvP and it's STPL, so anything can happen. And let's check out what's going to happen when we get back after this short break.
EPL Season 3 Yeah STPL Das Bio TVP Wow No problem We got dragons to defend Yeah STPL Das STPL Das Mass Scout Oh, I'm so afraid We got Hydralis to defend Yes STPL STPL Fantastic production Fantastic casters Fantastic prize pool Only in STPL I'm about to overload my aggression inhibitors Okay guys, welcome back. We're gonna be heading, blah, blah, let me try that again. We are gonna be heading into game number three up here. We have the captain of EF. He actually departed the team for a little bit after the Mafia scandal happened, but he came back and with him, he bought the wonderful Bob Malcolm who did sing the STPL does, uh, STPL does, sorry, uh, video from the break. Really, really nice of him to do that. He's actually made another video as well. And I think this one might even be better. So I'm gonna play that in the next break, but it is going to be a PvP. King Toss, not doing so well in the SCPL in the games he's played. He definitely isn't much of a player. He's more an organizer and a very good one at that. And he is up against the number four player in the SCPL is going to be the Walt. I mean, I'm not wanting to count anyone out, but I mean, this is a pretty rough situation. The Walt, he's on 18 wins, three losses against Protoss. That's an 85% win rate. And if I remember correctly, DeWalt's highest win streak in PvP is 12-0. So, it's rough. It is really rough. As a matter of fact, I can't remember when DeWalt last lost against a Protoss. So he actually lost against Reach from Valhalla team. That ended his streak. So, it's definitely tough. DeWalt is definitely the one who's favored here. But we are going into one of the more standard maps. One of the more macro-orientated maps from uh, Brood Wars history. It is going to be Andromeda. It was a map from 2010, uh, sorry, from 2008, 2009, sorry. It was still used in 2010 in some tournaments. And it's just a really, really macro oriented map. It's very easy to get to three bases. A little bit harder to get three gases, which is one of the reasons why this map is so good. Uh, but it's just overall a really, really fun map to play. So let's get into it. It's game number two. It's King Toss versus DeWalt. Okay, the game has begun and starting us off here in the bottom right hand corner, fighting for ILK, it's going to be DeWalt. And starting us off in the bottom left hand corner in the blue, sorry that's King Toss in the bottom right, and in the bottom left hand corner in the blue is DeWalt. <laughs> My bad. Got them around the wrong way. That's one of those moments where I have one job as a caster, and I am like, I can't get this wrong. It's the one thing that needs to go right at the beginning of the game, and somehow, somehow I get it wrong every time. <laughs> Now, IRK are going to need a little bit of a cheer here, so let's throw up a cheerful for them, made once again 
by the wonderful lucky noob. Just got to bring up the right one. Where are we? Here we go. Now this one's cool. I can't remember where it's actually from though, uh, but it's it's a really cool image. It is from something, uh, but it is a cheer for IRK. They are zero two down at the moment. They do need your energy if you want to help IRK get through and win the series. They need to win this game now. Dewalt is obviously in a very good position to do so, just by virtue of being Dewalt. But nothing is confirmed until the player says GG. Anything could happen, including a disconnect. So you never know. Thankfully, I don't think we've ever... Okay, I'm, I really shouldn't say this because uh, there's a phrase in the UK which it says put the mockers on something. You're basically cursing yourself, right? If I say that there's never been a disconnect... There, uh, actually, there has been one disconnect in the STPL. It was Chaelin versus Medino in Season 2 uh, on Blitz X. There was a disconnect. There was no clear winner in the game. Like, there was no clear... Uh, clear thing to go off of so it ended up being a regame which Medina won if I remember correctly uh, it's put the mockers on something M-O-C-K-E-R-S mockers I don't know where that comes from but that's a phrase I've known since I was a kid so it must be an English English thing I don't think Scottish people say it which is why I don't see it's a British English thing by the way Okay, we've got two gate against two gate. This is all going to come down to micro if DeWalt does decide to push as well. But both players actually just playing defensive two gate here. Uh, looks like DeWalt is probably going to get ready to try and expand quite quickly, I would say, to his mineral only. No gas from either player. Oh, sorry. Yeah, no gas from either player, actually. But DeWalt has been skipping on, um, on Zealots. So DeWalt has enough for an expansion. The probe is still not on the way. There we go. The probe is going now, but a little bit late from DeWalt. Although he is going to build the two. Oh, he's not actually going to expand. Okay, this is just weird. Now, given everything, I would actually put King Toss at a little bit of an advantage here. He does have the macro advantage over DeWalt. He's got an additional Zealot, and he's also got an additional probe at the moment. Now, obviously, when we do start to see that Nexus coming in, things will get a little bit better. We see, looks like King Toss wanted to hide something over there in the top left, but does get caught off guard by a nice scout by DeWalt. That's definitely not going to help too much. Nexus finally on the way. Still no gas here from King Toss. King Toss building up a lot of money. King Toss should definitely get ready to, to expand. Like King Toss needs to build a Nexus right now. Or at least build a gas and try and transition, because the problem is... King Toss is getting himself caught up on a single zealot. Like, this is something you can't really allow to happen in, Z in, Z in PvP. Forge coming in. Looks like people are allergic to gas in this game. Finally, we have King Toss building his gas, but DeWalt doesn't care. The wall is like, I am going to win this game with just one resource, and that is going to be minerals. I mean, technically, if he expands here, he can get more minerals and more zealots and more gateways. Let's do it. Zealot man. Let's, uh... One thing I would like to say as well, I forgot this last time, the wall is the miracle toss. If you didn't know it, it's in his match history, he beat Shine in a macro ZBP. It was really, really good. Custom used up in the Miracle Toss, and I've stolen it, so that's going to be his nickname from now on. And Miracle Toss is actually a really good name. I like that a lot. Especially for DeWalt, that suits him really well, because he comes out for IRK, and he performs absolute miracles against such amazing, amazing players. Now, it looks like DeWalt wants to push back. King Toss did have a Zealot advantage before, but now the Zealot lead actually goes to DeWalt, because King Toss does have more probes. And there's no shield battery back here, so King Toss is going to find himself in a really odd position. He's going to be blocked away from his own ramp. We've got Zealot on Zealot action here. It's going to be really tough to tell how this is going to go, but King Toss is doing a really good job with this engagement. Wow. It looks like DeWalt is going to be able to get up to the top. Looks like some probes are being pulled as well to push away the final remaining Zealots. 
But these two zealots in the main could do a little bit of damage here. Looks like they are quite low. King Toss with a really nice pull on his probes. Going to clear those up really, really quickly. And now DeWalt's incredibly late gas is going to start to hurt him because he's got no dragoons. He's got no tech. And he's adding on cannons at the front because he knows he's just lost a ton of army. And King Toss is up 13 supply. Is the Miracle Toss going to be out miracled here as King Toss, a man who's only played two games in the STPL so far? Is he going to be able to take down the number four ranked player with 50 games played? At the moment, things are looking very, very nice for King Toss. The worker count is exactly the same. The tech advantage goes to King Toss himself. We are three gateways against only two, so the supply lead should keep growing and growing as long as King Toss can keep on top of his macro. And this is such a strange situation to be in. Now we've got another gateway coming in as well. It's going to be four of them. It's only two games in the STPL, Edward. Now this is going to be a big problem. Look at this. There's five Dragoons, a ton of Zealots, which are way too many for me to count quickly. Now, this could go badly though. There is a lot of cannons here. Cannons do a lot of damage per shot. It's 20. So if King Toss goes without a Reaver, without any high-tech units, this could actually go horrifically wrong. I have seen Protoss players throw the game like this. There's, there's no real reason for King Toss to be pushing right now. He should be expanding. He should be continuing to grow his lead. But he may just throw it away here in overconfidence. Like, when you get a massive advantage against someone who's a lot on paper better than you it is really rough to not kind of fall into this mindset where you're just like i should be able to win from here i've done so much damage and then you remember your opponent is one of the best protoss players in the world and you're like ah yeah that was a little bit rough but here we go are we gonna see king toss push in no he's seen the cannons and he is gonna pull back now are, is there any tech there is a citadel there is dts coming in now is there a robo there's a forge. But there's no rope. Oh my goodness. Oh no, DTs are going to run. Is he going to win with DTs? This is going to be rough. Oh no, the forge is going to be done. But is he going to get enough cannons quickly? And his units at the front. Oh my god, the units at the front don't matter. DeWalt is going to be going round with a drop. He's going to go. Well, he's not even going to push out the front with his DT because he knows. Like, he doesn't want. King Toss to build a cannon. Now, has he actually left it long enough? Looks like King Toss is going to try and run in here. He doesn't have a cannon building in his main. This is a massive, massive problem. These units are not going to be able to do anything. And there's now a DT in the main. This is game over. King Toss has no way of defending this. There's a cannon coming up in his main, in his natural even. But there's no way of defending the DT in his main. Three kills, four kills, GG. King Toss leaving very, very quickly there, even with an advantage still. Delaying the Robo cost him the game. Wow, DeWalt performing another miracle, coming back from an insane position from where he was really far behind after that initial, um, initial uh, Zealot push. But there we go. That's going to be it. So we're going to go into a quick break. When we get back, we'll head into game number three. It's going to be a good one. Don't go anywhere. Game number four, sorry.
I am the Scatman. Para pa pi pa pa para pum. Pa pa para pum. Para pi pa pa para pum. Pa pa para pum. Para pi pa pa para pum. I am the Scatman. Scooby doo 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 pa. Scooby doo 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 pa. Scooby doo 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 pa. I am the Scatman. Okay guys, welcome back. We're going to be going into map number four, which is going to be on Tripod. Now starting us off here for EF is going to be the Max. He's not playing too many games. The only game he played, he did get a loss for, which is a little bit unfortunate. Uh, but that's how the way, or that's the way it goes sometimes. So, his opponent fighting for RK. He played a few more games, but still not too many. It's going to be Vardy. Uh, Vardy with a 2-2. 50% win rate, but it, actually 100% win rate over one game against Protoss. So let's see how we're going to go as we get into map number three. Okay, starting us off down here in the bottom left-hand corner is going to be the brown Terran player fighting for ILK. It's body. Rage Dodal is the best brood war clan. Thank you, Finkfin, for the seventh month resub, man. Means so, so much. And Vardy's opponent spawning up here in the top left-hand corner in the orange fighting for EF is going to be DN Max. Okay, so are we going to see a standard game from these two? I believe DN Max may have been one of the players. No, sorry, that was Leia Boiler, who I basically, in one of my Clash for Char casts a very, very long time ago, screamed that they'd actually gone full Peru. Uh, but DN Max, very well known for his aggressive play in PvT. I wonder if we'll see some of that here. It is a very good map for aggression. There's lots of places you can proxy. And drops on this map are incredibly good, so we'll have to find out. So we've got both players kind of scouting out where each other are. We've got a barracks coming in at the front. Interesting positioning on these buildings. I think that might be cellar proof, but I'm not 100% sure. Core, kind of, kind of Core coming up for DM Max. Not really too much going on at the moment in TVP, of course, but... TVP definitely one of my favorite matchups in the SCPL. We've had some incredible games of TVP. To be honest, we've had some incredible games in general. Although I would say that because I do host the tournament. 
I mean, I'm hoping. I'm hoping that you guys agree as well. There's a lot of you guys that come back every day, so it is a big, big help that you guys are around. Always keeping chat active because no one ever says anything otherwise. Oh, this is clever. Vardy is going to open up a way into the middle of the map. This is not... It's not the most common of tactics to use, but if you can open this, then you can, and you can open one on the other side as well, you can get vultures over to your opponent's base very, very quickly now. That's actually really weird what just happened there. Uh, it looks like the uh, pylon is going to go down. Interestingly, rather than waiting for that to die, he's just built the command center off center. Because look at... Okay, four marines and an SCV cannot kill a pylon before it finishes building. That's crazy. You now, if only Terran had a worker that could do that, just place a building and it builds itself. The amount of games I've lost to, like, probes harassing my SCV are finally going to be over. It's not too bad, though. SCVs have their good points. Now, we do have people in chat saying that it may be a long one, but we've got we've got DTs coming in because of course we do. It is going to be a DT expand, which is definitely the most common or definitely not the most common of openings in TVP in this current era, but it's definitely very indicative of the Peruvian playstyle. Like if you were to think of the Peruvian playstyle back on IC Cup, everyone would say, well, they all cheese, they're all very aggressive. But It's super rough. Edward in chat saying it's one of the first things you learn as a Terran player, how to deal with worker harass. Okay, there's learning to deal with it and also being actually able to deal with it because it's a lot harder than you make it sound. It is annoying and sometimes it's still a pain. Like I've been playing this game now for 13 years and if you get unlucky, you can't finish a wall and that's game over, you know? Now, it looks like the end max has figured out the middle of the map is open now, unfortunately... <laughs> unfortunately for him... Oh my god, that's really lucky. I was gonna say... <laughs> he finds the SCV that wanted to open another path. That's really funny. And he's gonna go and block it from mining out the other one as well. So, the end max going into the middle of the map doing pretty well here. Now, we are gonna have drop play coming in for Vody, which seems to be kind of the flavor of the month on this map uh, for PVT. Interestingly, Vody isn't walling this in just yet. I think you can build a depot there. I don't think it's a tight, tight wall, but it's better than nothing. We've got a third base coming in up here for DN Max. We've got a DT running in. Now, do we even... Oh my god, do we have any mines? Oh no. Oh no, I've seen this one before. I think we just saw this game, no? Oh wow. Well, never mind. He should have killed the tank first, I would say. The four marines, definitely not worth killing. Uh, but that's something that's happening. It looks like DN Max wants to... He wants to kill all the mines, I think. But, yeah, that didn't go too well. Now, the thing is, DN Max behind this, he's got a third base finishing. His macro is going to really start to kick in. He's got a worker advantage. And that was only one DT that he lost. That is not a major deal. Now, the thing that could end the game is if Vody can get a good drop off here, because we've got a... This is the worst place in the world for this Dragoon to sit. It's got no vision of the high ground. <laughs> that has to be the most unfortunately placed Dragoon I have ever seen on this map. The one place that, the one place that actually helps in no way, shape, or form. Okay, so we've got the Siege Shank on the high ground. This is a little bit far forward, uh, but it is going to give him the ability to attack the Nexus, which is pretty important. We've got a Dragoon coming back here to help defend against this, but because there's no... Or there is a Robo, but because there's no Shuttle, there's no way of dealing with this. So he should, given enough time, be able to kill this Nexus. It's definitely going to be rough. 
We've got a cannon. No, we've not even got a cannon up here. So this could be Vonnie's way back into this game. I say back in. He's not really been out of the game whatsoever. But he's not pushing at all. And that's actually a big, big mistake. Like, if he pushes this base, like, before this point, that's a ton of dead probes. And this is when things start to become a problem, because this tank on the high ground is doing pretty good. But it's not going to be able to deal with all the Dragoons. The dropship does manage to get away, which is super, super important. But if you think about the damage he did there, he did one... He killed one probe, and that was it. Like, he... He didn't even... Well, he did, like... He did 11 hull damage to the uh, Nexus. Like, that isn't enough. We've got a shuttle now as well, which means any subsequent drops will not be anywhere near as strong unless he starts to go into double drop territory. He's actually going into a wraith to try and help out his drops. Now, the good thing for Vody is his upgrades are not too bad. Usually when you open up dropship play, it can be very easy to delay your armory very, very late. I mean, this is late compared to like an armory build, but it's not too bad. Like, you're not super, super far behind. But the problem Vody has is he is going to have a massive hurdle to overcome because his opponent is already on three bases, already on 41 probes. And when you go drop and you don't get much damage done, it's very difficult to recover from that. Now, Vody is, of course, fighting for his team's life in this series. If Vody can win here, we will be going into an ace match. But if he can't, the end max is going to take it home. Nice scan there on the Observer. Just clearing that up is going to be able to kill it before it's too late. And this is going to give Vonnie the ability to add on a ton of factories here. Now, this is going to be 5 fact without a third command center. Which, once again, in this day and age, is actually quite rare in TVP. Now, the one problem that Vonnie is going to have as well, the longer the game goes on, is it makes it very difficult. Now, we've got the shot coming in to help clean up this drop. The tank has only got 2 kills. Oh, that's a little bit better. 5 kills now. But that's only 5 worker kills. Maybe 6 or 7. That isn't a big deal, honestly, for, for DN Max. He's going to be feeling pretty good about that. Going into Vessel Play now. Six factories off of just one command or two command centers. Now, this is going to be an all-in from Vonnie. So, Vonnie is going to try and build a ton of units and just push. And look at this. This is so clever. He's opened up this path. He's got an area here that he's opened up as well. And he's in a really good spot. Now, I just heard something shooting at stuff, but... Ah, he's killing the uh, eggs so he can leave his base a little bit easier. But pushing through this middle ground here would be very good. It gives Vonnie the chance of expanding to one of three bases, if not all three. They all have gas. And it's also by pushing that way is going to secure his left-hand base here if he wants to expand. Now we've got the uh, Wraith moving forward with the Vessel, but for some reason the Vessel deciding... No, I don't want to kill the Observer. What? Why did he scan? Why did he scan that? That is... That's... Okay, that's a brain fart. As Terran, sometimes you forget you've got Vessels, and you're like, oh... Oh damn, I wasted a scan, but here we go. Looks like we're going to have a drop coming into the main base. Is this going to do a lot of damage, or is it going to do nothing? The cannon there already. Only two probes, three probes, four probes, five probes... Six probes, seven probes. Okay, this is definitely looking a little bit better, but no mines have been placed. Eight probes go down there. But with no mines, it means there's a little bit less to worry about. Now, DN Max getting ready to defend this area. Body still isn't technically pushing. He's just continuing to build up, probably waiting for plus two to finish. No, he can't be waiting for plus two. It's only just started. He has to go. And I think he's going to get ready to go now. Now we've got no Stargate from DN Max, so there's no additional tech coming in. DN Max getting ready to most likely expand to these bases here. Now this is going to be a really weird situation, because if Vody pushes left right now, and pushes straight towards his opponent's main, and also defends this area properly, this could be very rough for the Max. His units are miles out of position. They are nowhere near where they need to be. 
And that is not something you want. Now, Vardy going to scan ahead, try and find out where his opponent's army is. Actually, check and protect as well. Seize the gateway count. Now, Vardy really shouldn't push right. Pushing right would be the worst decision in the world. There's absolutely no reason to go over here. Pushing to this location and pushing up and killing this base and this base. Because you can leave two tanks here and kill the mineral line. That is the best possible scenario. Now, obviously, we know that Dn Max is coming this way with his army. And that's why going the other way is so good. Because it, how is Dn Max going to get back home to defend his main? He's not. He is not coming back to defend his main. Like, there is no way. If Vadi just goes, like, he can win this game. The end Max's positioning here is so, so strange. Like, if he'd have opened up this center bit, maybe I could forgive this a little bit more. Now, there is an observer that is spotting for this. Now, this is the laziest Wraith and, <laughs> Wraith and Vessel combo I've ever seen. But this is rough now, because DN Max knows it's coming, and now he's going to push. And guess what? Vardy's only on two bases, and oh my goodness. Oh, that could have been a crazy mind. A lot of SCVs are starting to go down here. The command center is going to be under fire. But he should be able to repair this. Now, he should split his army. Split your army, go off with some of your army to attack and some to defend. You only need about three tanks here to defend this realistically. The uh, looks like a drop going into the main, not doing too much damage, getting cleaned up pretty quickly by the reinforcements. And as much as I said the end max can't go home, if he does lose this army as well, he's in the same predicament. Because even though even though he won't have the army itself, realistically they wouldn't be in the right position anyway. So. Looks like uh, Bonnie may be baiting it or being baited into this a little bit too hard. The fourth base is going to get a chance to come up here over in the top or the right hand side. In the main of the end max, we still do not have... Okay, we do have tech. It's going to be Arbiters, sorry. Second Stargate coming up as well. Is he going to be able to hold on to this bush? I did mention this before, but plus two is done now. He delayed long enough that plus two is finished. And when plus two is done... I mean, realistically, you should be getting plus three right now, buddy, but that's not a massive deal. Because look at where DN Max's army is. We've got a cluster here, we've got a cluster here, and we've got two High Templar here with Storm. Storm is going to be possibly the great equalizer here, but is, is three Storms going to be enough? Like, if he pushes forward here, this is not going to do too much. Now, obviously, if we have a bad siege coming in from Vonny, then this could be a problem, but... Let's see what the storm's going to be like. That is a nice storm to start off, uh, start us off a nice second storm as well. I mean, look at this. The end max is forced into an awful position. His units are going to get stuck here as well because he's still not mining that out. And he's now going to have units at his gateways. This is going to be four or five gateways that are going to do absolutely nothing. The end max, unsure whether to go for a counter. But even if you counter here, what's it matter? There's nothing there. I mean, this means Vardy is actually mined out right now, pretty much. So this is a do-or-die situation for Vardy. DN Max definitely still in a pretty good position. He really should focus these uh, pylons, but... How do you defend this position as DN Max? I just don't think there's any way, right? He's going to be forced down a small ramp on the low, or from the high ground to the low ground. An EMP going off on the back High Templar as well, making things a lot harder for the end, Max and Vardy. He is absolutely killing it here because this is looking very, very good. Like, we've got an Arbiter. But at what cost? It looks like the way this is going, Vonny is going to be taking us into the ace match. Now, obviously, that's better for us because it means we get a game number five. But DN Max has got to be kicking himself in this game. DN Max had such a major advantage, and then he just didn't play the map. Like, he sent his units completely over the wrong side of the map here. They were not in a position to counter. They didn't really achieve anything. Now, Stasis might be done, but Recall is not going to be finished. I think an EMP even went off on this. Yes, it did. So he even got his Arbiter EMP'd. 
And it looks like he is going to try and go for a counter here. This is uh, one... Uh, on the flip side, this is another do or die situation here because... I mean, Vody needs to hold his hold his uh, ramp here. If he cannot hold his ramp, he's going to die as well. This is rough. But look at Vani. He knows how important this is. All of his units are coming back home. He's killed the main. He's killed every single gateway. We've got four more gateways coming up on the right-hand side. There is an Arbiter coming up over here as well. But he needs to defend his main. The Nmax is still in with a chance here. The Nmax is doing so, so well to break up into this base. But he can't beat the army. He has to kill the buildings without the army killing him. And I just don't see that happening. He's not targeting the tanks as they come in. The Dragoon's getting lower and lower. And I think this is going to be game. Vody is in such an amazing position. He saves all his factories. He kills all of the Dragoons. And uh, Vonnie's base starting to look a little bit like the Swedish flag at the moment, with all the blue and yellow all over the place, uh, with the Dragoons dying. But, I mean, DM Max is trying to hold on. He's got this base over here on the right. Now, if he does have a stasis, he can defend this base by stasising the ramp. But it's tough. It's going to be rough. I mean, this double arbiter coming over here going to pop out just before the pylon dies, which is a very good win for the end max here but all of the tech is going down templar archives is gonna fall and all vonnie has to do is take out this right hand base body's on two base we've got the max on two base as well but body is definitely in a good position We almost have enough for a stasis down here. Vadi is in a very, very good position. Oh my goodness, no. That EMP just won Vadi the game. Without stasis here, there is nothing DM Max can do. GG. What a win. What an EMP. And that's going to be it for game number four. And we're going to be going in to an ace match here. So when we get back after this break, we'll be heading into game number five. It's IRK versus EF. And it's coming down to the wire. See you guys soon. Toss a coin to your content creators, O oh, Valley of Plenty, O oh, Valley of Plenty, oh, oh. Toss a coin to your content creators, a friend of humanity.
Okay guys, welcome back. It's the ace match between IRK and EF and you guys guessed it right, it's DeWalt versus Chalin. Starting us off here on the bottom left hand corner is going to be the Miracle Toss himself. It's DeWalt. And spawning us off here in the top left hand corner of Fancy 2 in the white, fighting for EF, it's Chalin. Now this is Fancy 2, if you don't know this map, you've not been watching SCPL Season 3 very much, but it's a very, very good map. It's a mix between four different maps. Uh, the two spawns we'll see here are Sin Gamer Go On in the bottom left, which actually works out pretty well for DeWalt to be able to expand. And we also have in the top left, Legacy of Char. Oh, and they played on turn rate 24 and it's smooth. Nice. Shaylin's rank in the SCPL, at least before her previous win, was 15. Uh, it's probably gone up after that one, but she's getting very, very close to the top 10. I definitely think Shaylin is going to be one of those top 10 players. If uh, As long as EF continue in the SCPL moving forward and Shaylin continues playing as well, which I really hope they will do and I really hope she will do, uh, she should be able to make it into the, um, into the top 10. EF are very, very close to qualifying for the playoffs as well. This is such an incredibly important match for both teams. IRK are vying for a spot for getting a semi-final playoff seeding, which is very, very good. It means they don't have to worry about the first round at all. And uh, if EF can win here, they're going to not guarantee themselves just yet, but they're going to put themselves a little bit higher uh, than some of the other teams, which is going to make their playoffs a little bit easier to get into. Uh, playoffs are super important this season as well. Six teams will be moving forward. Only four teams get the money at the end of it all. And they're fighting for over $2,000 this season. There's 45% goes to first place. 30% goes to second. I think third is 15 and fourth is 10 or something. I can't remember exactly. It's in the format video. It's in the format screen at the beginning. Looks like Shaylin getting ready to try and block the cannon. Doesn't quite manage it, but not the biggest deal. It was an overpull from Shaylin into a 12 hatch, so nothing too crazy to write home about. DeWalt should be able to uh, expand pretty easily here behind just the one cannon. Now the one thing that DeWalt is going to benefit from on Sin Gamer Go On is it's very easy to take a third base as Protoss. And the fact they've both spawned at vertical spawns uh, means the two island bases at 12 and 6 are going to be incredibly important. I imagine DeWalt is probably... I, I mean, I can't tell because DeWalt does everything, but I think we're probably going to see Reavers from DeWalt here, just because Reavers are so, so good on this map. It's, it's so droppable, and it's so likely that your opponent is going to go for a big uh, Reaver bust, a, a big Hydra bust. That going for Reavers can be a little bit better against Hydra Bus than Storm is. Storm is a fin like it's a finite resource. Like you only have as much energy. And I I guess technically, if you were to talk about it, Reavers are a finite resource as well. But they're a little bit more I would say they're more reliant well, Storm is more reliant on your opponent messing up uh, than Reavers are. Because Reavers just constantly shoot. As long as you're on scarabs, they'll keep doing damage. Whereas Storm, if you miss the Storm, or if your opponent dodges it right away, the Storm really doesn't help too much. Uh, DeWalt and Chaelin are both playing for a second time fear because this is the ace match. It's game number five, uh, meaning that any player can play again. If you hear someone in a solo tournament say that game number five is an ace match, they are unfortunately wrong. There is no ace matches in BSL. There is game fives, but no ace matches. Now... One tip that you may not know about um, one tip that you may not know about the Miracle Toss DeWalt is DeWalt's last game in PvZ. Oh, this is okay. This is double Hydra Den. This is a very very fast all in from Chalen. This is going to be the world's quickest Hydra bust. Now, if DeWalt goes Reavers, he's not. He's going Storm. This could be uh, this could be risky. But DeWalt's last game in PvZ. He played against Shine in a macro game, and he won. Like, that's how good DeWalt is. He can go against the bag of builds himself, Mr. Shine, and win in a macro game. It was like a 25-minute game on La Mancha. 
DeWalt shouldn't lose to this Hydra Bust. He shouldn't. But it's so easy to fall behind in PvZ behind this. Like, if you overbuild cannons and they don't commit to the Hydra Bust, you put yourself really far behind. Now, it is going to be Storm. It's not going to be Reavers. I think Reavers may be a little bit better on this map. But by securing this, DeWalt can still take a third base. Now, there is a proxy over here as well. It's going to be a gateway over on the right-hand side. Now, this is an interesting move because this means DeWalt is going to be able to build DTs over here and go behind the army of Chalian. I think, I think DeWalt knows that he's about to get Hydra busted and he just wants to try and hold the front and then go with like a sneak attack around the back. This is what the Miracle Toss does. He takes a situation where he could be behind and in a miracle he turns it around. And is he going to be able to do it here again? He did it against King Toss. He was very, very far behind against King Toss and he managed to pull it back and win with a DT. Is the same thing going to happen here? DeWalt knows that all he has to do is hold on to the front. Look where the overlords are. There's not an overlord defending this base. There is not an overlord in the natural as well. And there's no overlord in the main. If this DT can avoid the overlords, this is going to be risky. But here we go. It looks like we are going to have the Hydra pushing forward. The probes have been pulled. The High Templar actually just stood right in the middle of everything. It can't even run away. Being used as a blocker here. This is a ton of cannons have gone down. But more cannons are coming up. The probes still hold. There's about to be a storm here as well. Now look at this. Chaelin, I think, knows there's a DT coming. She's pulling back here, but is it going to be quick enough? Overlord speed is not yet done. DeWalt is about to head into the natural where there is a ton of drones. Now some of the drones being pulled forward. Looks like Chaelin does know this is happening. Oh, DeWalt should just do damage in the natural, but looks like he's getting greedy and going for the main. This could be a big, big mistake here, but holding on. Looks like two drones are going to go down. Three drones. Is it going to be four? It doesn't look like it. It is going to be four. Okay, so four drones, a pretty good win. There, four DeWalt holding off against the Hydra Bust. Very, very important. And he did manage to save his High Templar as well. Okay, so no additional tech coming in just yet. No Stargate, which means a Muteless Switch from Chalin could be pretty good. But as DeWalt knows... Oh, there was a lair morphing, but it was cancelled. So Chalin is just going... Oh, Chalin double morphed layers by accident. Okay, so we've got a lair coming in here. We do have two more. Oh, we've got two overlords there. The same thing is not going to work twice against Chalin. The Miracle Toss is going to have to build his Miracle Shuttle to take that into the main. Looks like he wants to try and get by again. This is a very risky DT play. There's no way this gets by, right? <laughs> oh man, that DT is very unlucky. That would have got past if it wasn't for the Rallied Hydra. <laughs> okay, now we've got four High Templar here. The third base is not coming up yet for DeWalt. DeWalt probably going to get ready to go for a bit of a push here, going up to four gateways. Chalin's all in is still technically... Well, it's over as such. We're going up to... Six hat no five hatcheries now. We're gonna have drops coming in as well. Now, one thing I would love to see DeWalt go for is a Dark Archon. We saw him go for Dark Archon against Shine, and it actually helped him win the game. Now, I mean, skipping into Zealots from this position isn't too bad, but a Dark Archon against Overlord drops is one of the best things in the game. Maelstrom is so unbelievably strong because Overlord drops basically always clump up. Whenever you see a Zerg drop all of their all of their overlords are just all in a big clump every single time i don't know why i don't know if it's just the way they rally them and the way they um bring them in but it's why maelstrom is such a good spell and it's severely underused but there's no second dt coming in so i think that's uh not going to be something we'll see oh one of the high templar gets taken down that's actually a massive problem for the wall that was a very high energy high templar now, interestingly, does DeWalt see... No, he doesn't see the Overlords. Oh, this was a really off storm there. A very iffy storm by DeWalt there. But this is a lot of units. This is still a lot of units pushing forward. There's no Sunken here just yet. The DT is going to be looking to do a ton of damage. 
Oh my god, the DC is going to be able to get into the natural here. Is there a single overlord? Yes, there is, but there's no units. The Zealot's coming in to try and block the Sunken and to keep the units busy. Here we go. Oh, only two kills. This Hydra coming back was very, very clutch. That was a hero Hydra. Now there is a cannon in the main, a second cannon coming up as well. DeWalt knows that drops could be a possibility here. One of the High Templar does manage to escape up to the top right. And DeWalt is going to look to try and hide a third base. Here is the Dark Archon. Here is the beefy boy. Is this Dark Archon going to be able to stop this drop? If it does, can we get the follow-up storms? Or are we going to see the drop come in anyway? Dark Archons are very hard to move around. They are very big. They get stuck on a lot of things. And right now, it's not in a good position to defend against the drop. And here we go. This is going to be the moment. Does DeWalt know this is coming? There is no vision on this drop whatsoever so far. A high temper is in the main though. This is very, very important. These are slow overlords. DeWalt knows something's coming now. He's going to send all his units back, but there's going to be no Maelstrom. Now it looks like the Lurkers are going to try and get on top of the units here, but what a storm! DeWalt with an amazing storm. They're going to really hurt a lot of these Lurkers, but the Lurkers are still alive. The detection is gone and there's still no maelstrom the maelstrom could come in though it could reveal the lurkers that was actually a very good use of the spell don't want to use too many storms here but are we gonna i really want to see a maelstrom there's a storm it's not going to hit the lurkers though that's a little bit unfortunate uh, the hydra is going to get into a position to kill the cannons and this is rough we're going to see a retreat here from dewalt from his main this is not what you want to see happening as a DeWalt fan right now, but can the Miracle Toss perform another Miracle here? Or are we going to see a Chalin victory? It's going to be tough. Things are definitely looking a little bit rough here. DeWalt still waiting for more energy. The probe's actually just transferring past the units. Okay, here we go. He's going to come in. Oh, he's waiting for the Observer. Here we go. Oh, Maelstrom getting a lot of the Hydras. Not as many as maybe he'd want to, but that's still going to be good. Storm coming down as well. And this is technically an all-in here from Chalen. Uh, we do not have another Maelstrom. A lot of the units have gone down, and I think that may be the nail in the coffin here for DeWalt here. It's a little bit unfortunate. Going up against a player as good as Chalen is definitely, definitely tough. But it's still not over for DeWalt here. DeWalt is still going to fight his way into the game if he can. The, uh, there is a lot of zealots here. There's another storm coming up. There's another two storms almost. I uh, no, that is two storms. The lurker egg going to go down before it can finish. A nice storm going down on these hydras. A nice storm going on the other hydras as well. Can DeWalt hold on to this? This would be insane. But the lack of a stargate, the lack of any way of killing the overlords has really, really hurt DeWalt this game. Looks like more and more zealots coming out. A lot of the zealots really heavily bruised. There's no counter damage coming in. And it's just constant dropping. The dropping just does not end. The Templar Archives did go down as well. And it looks like DeWalt trying to push forward. Trying to clear the units out of his main. But he lost his main hatchery. If he didn't have this top right hand base now the game would be over. But DeWalt has still got a lot of money. He's still got a lot of income. And can he transfer that income into a victory still? It's still going to be tough. It's still going to be rough. Both of them, even on supply. But speed is done on the overlords. More lurkers coming in here. And not many units coming out at a time here for DeWalt. Now DeWalt's only option is to fall back to the low ground. Build more cannons down here. Because realistically the main has fallen. And there's very little the main can do. There is a zealot out here getting ready to run by to maybe do some damage. But the gateway is going to fall. And that means the wall is going to be locked into his natural. Now just imagine this if he'd had Reavers. I know Reavers wasn't his plan. But Reavers would actually be very good. <laughs> like Reavers right now would mean Chalen couldn't push down the ramp. But this could be the nail in the coffin. Two cannons coming up here at the natural. Going to be going down cannon at the back trying to hold on the zealot doing its best but the lurker on the high ground gonna start to do a ton of damage to this probe line and this is getting worse and worse there we go gg dewalt taps out and despite taking down shine he could not perform a miracle here and chalin takes him down to win the series three to two
in favour of EF. Now that is going to bring an end to our series for today. That was a great final game. Honestly, maybe if the uh, the maelstrom, or maybe if the um, maybe what am I going to say? Maybe if the Dark Archon was in a position to defend against that drop with a maelstrom, that could have been better. But honestly, that was a six hit game. Chalin came out with a very tailored strategy for those positions in that map. And despite the fact her um, Hydra Bus didn't work, she still managed to find a way to make that game work. And she really abused the fact that DeWalt just didn't have an anti-air. That was it. That was really, really sick. So that is going to be us for today. 3-2 win for EF. Very, very nice. I'm actually going to uh, reload the overlay in just one second so we can see how that actually affects the standings. Uh, EF also have an additional win uh, because EF against VT was a 4-0 walkover initially, but they later played some of the games so they could get the games played. So uh, Chalin actually played in one of those as well, so we'll be able to add that to the database too. So we had some good games today. It's been a lot of fun to be able to cast it for you guys. Thank you once again for all tuning in. I'm going to quickly show you guys the team rankings so you can see how that's changed things. Uh, IRK dropping means Valhalla team. No, this, this doesn't make any sense. Why has that gone that way? Ah. I am very confused. I think somehow something's gone on with the overlay. Yeah, it says it, it doesn't have the penalty losses, but I added them. Oh, I think I know what's probably happened. Yeah, I think I know what's happened. Uh, things are going to be a little bit different, but IRK are going to drop down. EF are going to move up into fourth from sixth. And that's going to make things a little bit more interesting. Red changed their logo because I asked them to. Because having a shaved cock and balls on a stream that's trying to look professional is uh, a little bit risky. And it's also not very good. They made a logo for the STPL. They use their normal logo elsewhere, but I actually prefer their new logo. I think it looks a lot better. But yeah, the penalty losses, they uh, removed themselves, I think, when it recalculated the group stage statistics. So that's just going to be how that is. I'll have to figure out how to um, how to fix that. We'll probably have to add them on at the end when we don't recalculate the statistics anymore. But if you want the up-to-date statistics, the full ones, check out Liquipedia. This is a really good chance for me to say a massive thank you to our sponsors, Liquipedia, Esport Fund, and Matarino. All of them have done a great job supporting the STPL. With Liquipedia and Esport Fund, we got the initial $1,000. And with Matarino and the amazing donations from the community, we managed to make up the other $1,000 for our $2,000 goal. So... It's really cool that we've managed to do that. It's been really, really great fun. Looks like Oya is streaming. I'm just trying to find someone else to cut or to host even. I'm going to go host her. Uh, I want to host her mom, but I guess Oya technically is. Yeah, Oya is streaming and he does play in the SCPL, so I'm going to raid him. That seems more fair. Okay. We're going to read Oya. See you guys next time. Be back on Wednesday, same time, same place. Don't go anywhere.